I've always had trouble with the corners of my 3D prints curling and peeling before the print was finished. I eventually noticed a pattern. It was always the same corners that lifted. Searching for advice, I found a great article by Desi Quintins about manually leveling the exact same model 3D printer I had. The idea is to add a stretched out spring washer under each of the screws that hold the bed down. Then you just adjust the screw tension to change the bed's angle. Instead of spring washers, I just bent some plain zinc washers and they did the trick. Maybe they'll be too soft in the long run, but for now they work. Typing the G-code to measure each corner is no fun, so I made a small utility that connects directly to the printer and lets you test a point in one click. With all four corners at the exact same height, I discovered something interesting. The center of my bed was still two print layers higher than the corners. I wanted a clearer picture, so I added a pattern tool to my inspection utility. You can pick how many points you want in the grid, and it charts out just how warped things are. The result was colorful. The difference between the highest and lowest point was three full print layers at 0.1 millimeter layer height. How could I make the bed flat? Finding a machine shop with a surface grinder would have worked. When I saw that a surface plate was only $35, maybe it would just take putting a large sheet of sandpaper on it and I could sand the entire bed at once. Four hours of wet sanding later, and I hadn't even made it through the anodized layer. Testing with a feeler gauge, there were still huge gaps between the reference surface and the low spots on the printer bed. Doing it by hand would have taken forever. I'd heard that scraping is supposed to be the ultimate way to create a flat surface. I didn't have a scraper, and I was already tired of doing things with hand tools, so I thought something like a mouse sander would make a good substitute. The way scraping works is that you spread a few drops of colored oil over your surface plate in a very thin layer. Then you lightly slide the workpiece around the surface. The only places the color is picked up are on the high spots. This is where you'd traditionally use a hand scraper to shave those high spots off. Instead, I started with a 60 grit sheet and my sander to knock them down. No matter which tools you use, it can take a while. Reveal the high spots. Knock them off. Clean the surface. Reveal. Sand. Clean. Over. And over. And over. Every once in a while, you add a few more drops and roll it out again. Eventually, you'll start picking up color across more and more of the surface each pass. You'll know things are flat when you get a mostly uniform pattern across the whole face. It took another four hours, eventually dropping down to 80 grit, followed by 120 grit. You can tell that the top and bottom edges weren't quite finished here, but it was getting late and I was eager to see if I'd accomplished anything. This time it only took a couple of minutes of full bed sanding to get a nice, uniform brushed pattern across the whole thing. That was a good sign. Seeing almost no deflection on the dial indicator was another good sign. Time to put everything back together, level the four corners, and run another test pattern. This one uses the same color scale as before. The final result? One third of a millimeter deviation down to 1 30th of a millimeter. A full order of magnitude better, and only a small fraction of a single print layer difference across the whole bed. Before, I'd never dared to print anything larger than a few centimeters on a side. Now I can fill the entire bed without worry, and it only took eight hours of physical labor. Thanks for watching.